Hey everyone, welcome to the Trauma Cycle Podcast, an exploration of mental health, trauma, and healing through the vehicle of music, stories, and faith. I'm Nick. I'm Derek. Trauma Cycle is an album that I wrote and released to tr process the trauma that I experienced during my aggressive and gruesome treatments for stage four nasal cancer. By God's help, I beat the cancer and I'm working to beat the PTSD that followed. And in this podcast, we're going to be listening to the whole album, one song, every episode, talking about the painful stories behind the songs, looking for common threads of suffering that we may all relate to and trying to find the ways that God heals and may still want to heal. And I want everyone to know that you don't have to be trapped inside the trauma cycle. Hey, if you're watching on YouTube, leave a like that really helps out. And if you're on the podcast platforms, leave us a review that also really helps get the word out. You can listen to Trauma Cycle by Derek North on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, and wherever else you stream your music. And in today's episode, we are going to be discussing Healing is Harder. Derek, tell us a little bit about the song. Yeah, so the idea behind this song is to look at how identity and trauma are linked. Um, as I was trapped inside the trauma cycle, we discussed in the last episode, um, that really shaped a lot of my life and who I believed that I was. And then I realized um, I'm, I'm broken and I need to be healed. I'm injured and I need to be healed. But my cancer journey swallowed my life up so comprehensively that my identity very quickly shifted to be a cancer victim. My world was surviving cancer and that was it. That was it. And, and then when I got done, I didn't know how to be a, like a functioning human being again. I didn't know what it meant to be a supportive husband or um, uh, a, a, a interactive father or how to be a pastor at my church anymore or just to be a productive citizen. The idea of healing was scary because I knew how to be a cancer victim. I knew how to live inside these traumatic events. I didn't know how to be healthy. So getting healthy was scary. And it actually felt strangely safe to stay inside the pain, even though I knew it was destroying my life. And that's what I was trying to capture in this song. All right. Well, let's listen to Healing is Harder.
with the classic fade out at the end. Gotta love a good fade out, man. Gotta love it. I love that song. It has such a timeless feel with the mm-hmm. acoustic guitar in it, man. Thanks. And I gotta say, like, I think this is one of my favorite tracks on the album mm-hmm. because it's so accessible. The the message of it, healing is harder. Um, you know, because it's more about healing from the PTSD and not so much the cancer, I would say. Like it did that was the causation of it. Um, but I think uh a lot of people will relate to this song uh, because of the language in it. Um, so yeah, I really love that one. And dude, the melody at the beginning when the guitar rips in. <laughs> oh yeah. We could just do like an air guitar cover with us, with us just singing it. That's, that's what, that's what the next episode should be. Just, we're going to recreate the whole album. Just we're singing gonna- guitar parts. Maybe. Which is funny because you actually, like, you had a sort of inadvertently had a hand in <laughs> making this song, kind of, um, mm-hmm. because we've done a lot of projects together and you've edited a lot of music videos for me. And a couple of years ago, I put out this Christmas album mm-hmm. and we had shot a music video for Silent Night. So you were editing it f- for me and we were in the final stages of it. So we were meeting on Zoom and I was watching you edit. I didn't have a whole lot to do. So I sat there with my acoustic guitar and I was playing and I I was sort of messing with this riff. And you at some point you stopped your editing and you looked at me and you were like, bro, what is that? What is like, that? I, I don't know. I'm just messing around. And you were like, I like that. And I was like, ooh, Nick likes this. I got to <laughs> that's something then uh, that's OK. So then I like chucked it in my pocket. And then I was meeting for coffee with a good friend of mine from my church who had gone through just an incredibly devastating divorce uh, mm. with infidelity. And he was just he was just a wreck. And we yeah. were discussing how it feels strange to stay safe inside the pain. Mm. You know, his the wreckage of his divorce swallowed him entirely. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he was in this bubble of pain. And he's like, I don't want to stay here. But the idea of getting over this and healing, that seems scarier and harder. Yeah. So I'm just going to stay here. I know it Mm -hmm. hurts, but I strangely feel safe. And I was like, oh, man, I actually still feel that from Mm. the effects of my cancer. And that's how the theme of this song started blending with the riff that you gave a thumbs up to. (laughs) It's Nick approved. Uh, and I love how it comes back around after feel the empty, feel the radius, yeah. radiance of emptiness. Yeah. Feel the and radius it, of emptiness. Oh, the so radius. It's like, right. So like I'm living inside a bubble. I'm yeah. living inside a bubble of pain. And so you can feel the radius, but there's nothing inside. Feel the radius yeah. of emptiness. Um, yeah. And then it says it's mysterious and it's impervious. Like you can't get in there. I won't let you in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, and then so after you see the radius, the radius of emptiness, and then it, everything kind of just, poof, and it's yeah. almost like you kind of feel that you float along in that identity of pain, mm. and just like, oh, this is safe here, and then you hear yourself moaning, oh, oh, you know, you're a very, it's almost like the outside world is calling you forward out of the pain. I love that part. That's really man. interesting. I love, I love, one of the things I love about music is it's um, the freedom to interpret it and to, mm. and to see things and hear things in your own way. And I didn't make any of that connection from <laughs> the last word of the bridge being emptiness. And it just goes back to the um, quiet part of the riff. And then there's this voice. It was yeah. just more of like, all that was like a music production side of like, oh, I finished the break. Big thing, drop out. Drop Bring the it. intro back in. Yeah. Yep. How do we make it different so it's not the same? Put this like wah, wah, moaning in the wah. background. But it's really neat to hear you make a, a thematic connection. That's what I do, baby. What you do, baby. <laughs> um. Anyway, sorry. I'm nerding out on this one. This is, this is one of my 
This is the ones I keep going back to. I love <laughs> it. Love it. It's because I wrote the song. I wrote the song, really. Let's sorry. be honest. Nick wrote I'm, the song. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Our friendship is bleeding in. Anyway, um, <laughs> so this whole concept of your identity is wrapped up in your trauma. But uh, where can that go wrong? Where, where can that go wrong for somebody that has experienced trauma, right? We're not we're not living in it. We don't want to stay there, right? Right. The reality is that everyone suffers and everyone has pain. And a lot of people, maybe a majority of people, have had some sort of traumatic event in their lives. So trauma is a part of you. But trauma is not all of you. And for me, I was swallowed up by my cancer and the fallout afterwards. And it's all I knew. That's that's all I lived um, for a better part of a year. Um, You know, it was a feeding tube and radiation and IV treatments and hospital visits and, you know, throwing up. and, And that's all I thought about every moment of every day. But then that left, I got healed from the cancer, but then I was still living with all of this PTSD. And it was like, well, time to get back to life. Well, I didn't know how to be a functioning human anymore. And it was scary. And so it was going wrong because it was time for me to move on and get back into life. But I I didn't want to leave my protective bubble of my pain, of my identity as a cancer victim of these traumatic events, because that's all I knew for the better part of a year. And I didn't want to go into uncharted waters, which is the healing on the other side. So the song is a great irony because it says, I feel safer by staying in the pain. Yeah. And so just your treatment wasn't like I just go to chemo once every I'm tr- I'm not trying to minimize anyone's cancer treatment here, right? But because it was stage 4, like your whole entire life got turned upside down. Like you you didn't you stopped working. Um praise God that your church supported you guys through all of that. Um right, so like you literally every your whole entire being and schedule was like we need to beat this cancer now. Right. 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 I They caught it um, probably within about two weeks of it being a terminal diagnosis. Yeah. Um, so I had cancer behind my like nose plate here and the cancer had spread to my lymph nodes in the neck. Yeah. If it continued through the lymphatic system, it would have been a terminal diagnosis and there was nothing we can do. So as soon as they found it, it was like, stop everything switch track your whole life is now cancer surviving and yep. that's it that's um, it and that's it that you transitioned back to work and i remember that like you were like well going back to work now and it's like what like how, that doesn't make any sense like how does a person go from well i just beat stage four cancer got my brain and face obliterated and my body obliterate. Now I'm just going back to work. And it just seemed so like that doesn't make sense. Um, right. And, 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 and um, like I said before, I love my church and everybody of who course. works on staff with me. We didn't know any better. I didn't know yeah. any better. I had never gone through this. My church staff had never gone through this. So when the doctors are like, Hey, <laughs> great, you're done. Then it was like, we'll wait till the physical symptoms wear off. And I'm, yeah, physically capable of going back to work no one on staff myself included had any idea of how much damage was done how much injury my brain had sustained through these events yeah so i was back to work after maybe three and a half four months of the ending of treatment and i really should not have been Mm -hmm. at work i was not able to function um because being a pastor at a church, my job is to encourage people, to help people, to be there for people. But I didn't know how to help myself. I wanted to live inside this identity of pain uh, because that's what's safe to me, my identity as a cancer victim. So I didn't know how to get outside of myself to help other people. 
and I, I, yeah, I probably really had no business <laughs> being back at church that early, but we didn't know any better. And then going through counseling sessions and learning about the trauma cycle and how I was trapped in it and how I was circling it over and over again. And that I felt safe, strangely, inside of that circle. Um, there's this line in the song, um, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, tumble around the trauma cycle, you know, um, safe. Yeah. No, I said safe inside. Safe the trauma inside. Cycle. Yes. I'm yes. safe inside of it. Right. The last yep. song I'm screaming, I'm trapped in it. And this song I'm saying, well, I actually feel safe in it because I know it's painful and that's not good for me. But, but it's what I know. It's actually easier than yeah. getting outside of it. Oof, man. And that's such a. Oh, that's a that's a scary reality that your mind uh, and your body can attach itself to such unhealthy experiences and ex in an existence. Um, and so like, <clears throat> yeah, well, let me jump in there. I know you're forming yeah. a question, but let me jump in there because there's a line. Uh, maybe it's in the first verse um, uh, where it says such a sinful satisfaction. And yeah. I chose that word very carefully. Mm. Um, because I do believe in the devastating effects of sin, the reality of sin and the devastating effects it has on all of humanity down to the very core of my being in that I desperately want that which is unhealthy and destructive for me. And even in this situation, I believe it was an effect of sin's um, influence on my life that I would want to stay in such a devastating place and that I I'm so inverted that I think this is good for me. And there's a satisfaction by staying in this broken bubble of pain and self-destruction. That's a sinful satisfaction. It's wrong rather than going to a place of healing and wholeness where I can be healthy and full of peace again. No, I would rather stay here. So I chose that word carefully yeah. because it is a sinful satisfaction. Yeah. And then the, the line that follows justice having nothing to do with it because it's, it's not about right or wrong. What's right or wrong for me. It's not about what's right or wrong in God's morality. It's not even what's right or wrong for another person. If I hurt you out of my own trauma, I don't care. It's not about justice, right or wrong. It's about protecting myself, right? Sanity, um, uh, keeping your sanity becomes the one priority when everything around you burns. I just want to keep my sanity inside my protective bubble of pain. Well, yeah, because the pain, well, and we got to remember it's the pain is what has forced you to this place, right? It, it's like the pain hasn't been alleviated just because you're done with cancer. Like, there's still a bunch of pain from all of that, right? From even just like we talked about in the last episode with the, the eggs. Um, so that the reaction is horrifying. So what, what would stop you from staying in there uh, talking about like, so somebody is maybe feeling victimized by their trauma. Um, how would you encourage somebody who, who feels so wrapped up in their identity of this thing to break away from not letting their identity be victim, but rather road to healing. Mm -hmm. I think hope is such a powerful thing. Hmm. If you can have hope that there is something better for you on the other side of this pain, then you might be willing to move forward. And life is, life is pain. <laughs> you know, to quote the Princess Bride, life is pain. And if anyone tells you otherwise, they're selling something. They're selling something. Um, yeah. But choose your pain. Mm. You know, mm. uh, there's pain inside the trauma cycle. Mm. And it may be the familiar pain. But there's pain outside of the trauma cycle that leads you to health. So which pain are you going to, you're going to experience pain no matter what in your life. What pain are you going to choose? Are you going to keep choosing the pain that keeps you trapped or through hope, hope of healing? Are you going to choose the pain that will lead you to health?
just out of curiosity, like where are you on a scale of like, say one to 10 of staying in the pain, staying in the heart of stone versus getting out of the trauma cycle? I don't know if that's the two ends of the spectrum there. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I would, I'm, I'm not totally out of it. Um, and maybe I never 100% will. Maybe the effects of this and maybe the effects of your can- or your trauma, whatever it is, will stay with you for the rest of your life. But I'm significantly so much more healthy than I was when I started writing this music and started doing this album. Because again, this was never intended to be finished, but God pushed me into finishing it as part of the process of me healing and applying logic and language and time to my traumatic memories. So yeah, maybe I'm like an eight or a nine. I still have some physiological responses and some triggers. And um, there's, there's more that we're going to talk about in in future episodes uh, with another song, but I'm significantly so much more stable because I went through the process of, recognizing that I'm trapped in the cycle, that it's scary and hard to get out of it. And I had to be willing to accept the pain of moving forward with the hope of what's on the other side. And this song, I don't want these songs to be misunderstood by anybody who knows me or or cares about me because they're not a reflection of where I am now. It's a snapshot of where I was a few years ago and going through the process of, of doing all of this has moved me beyond that place. So I was um, feeling safe. I was, I was comfortable inside a heart of stone before, but I've moved beyond that now and I, I have grown um, and my identity is a person of um, joy um, in my relationship with, 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 with God, with, with my family, with my church. And I've moved, uh, into a place of, of being so much more mentally healthy, uh, even though I think I will be feeling the effects of this for my whole life. But this is a picture of what it was in some of the darkest times. But I think even if you're listening to it, and you can feel the darkness. Maybe there's knowing that God was with me the whole time that I was writing this and producing it and putting it out there. Maybe that's something hopeful to you, knowing that there is something on the other side of the bubble of pain. Yeah. Well, and I think that, again, is what is going to allow people to relate to it, right? Because it's a snapshot. You're putting language to a moment in time to an experience that you had that I think is a very common experience for other people. And so other people will be able to, who are experiencing, who are in that heart of stone, will be able to listen to that song and go, oh my gosh, that's me right now. What? Yeah. I especially think of 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 people who may have had a traumatic event inside an identity marking part of their life. What I mean by that, I think of maybe people who have had traumatic events um, within a marriage that has exploded because your your marriage should shape your identity Mm -hmm. or um, trauma, you know, from um, that a veteran may have experienced Mm -hmm. because your identity is I'm a soldier. I'm a Marine. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, this is who I am. And then it's hard to separate the trauma from the identity. Yeah. But those two things really need, do need to be separated in order to heal. So I can see someone um, staying inside, you know, the, the, the bubble pain because it happened mm-hmm. to a part of their life that was already shaping their identity, maybe even in a positive way. Yeah. And it gives language to it. And even for people that might not, who aren't experiencing that just yet, I think it gives them an appreciation and a language to understand, oh, maybe somebody in my community is experiencing that as well. Right. You know, the reality is maybe you're not going through something. Maybe you haven't had a traumatic experience, but I I guarantee you know somebody 
yeah. who is going through it, who has had trauma in their life. And that person may be trapped inside of the trauma cycle um, or may be on the road to healing, have taken the off ramp from that loop and is working towards healing. And that can give you language to meet with that individual, to be the person that individual needs to talk through. You know, maybe that individual is feeling a trauma trigger and has identified the physiological responses behind that trauma trigger and needs to choose a healthy coping coping mechanism like calling my friend or talking to my parent or a pastor or somebody else. And you can be the one that gets called and you can have you know, empathetic language and know how to meet this individual with grace and compassion yeah. and kindness and hope and help that person apply logic and language and time to their traumatic memories to move out of an identity of pain mm. into an identity of hope and healing. Derek, thank you for sharing your stories and your music. Everybody, make sure you join us again for the next episode where we continue to listen through the Trauma Cycle and discuss its themes. And once again, you can listen to Trauma Cycle by Derek North. That's that guy. Wherever <laughs> on Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, and wherever else you stream your music. Yeah, Nick, thanks so much, brother, for all your good help and your company, StoryCraft Productions, for doing what I can't do. Folks, be sure to check out Nick Asucci and StoryCraft Productions on Instagram and YouTube. Thanks, Derek. And thank you to everybody that joined us. Hey, before we go, if you know anyone that is hurting or could be helped by this music, go ahead and share it with them. Remember, there's always hope. There's always healing. And you don't have to be trapped inside the trauma cycle. Well, I'm trapped.